praise and thank God for this opportunity that the Lord has given me to be back with you all. Amen. 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 Exactly after one year. Amen. We are grateful for your prayers. Last whole year, traveling around the world. After coming here, God gave me the privilege to go to Sri Lanka, India, Nepal, Amen. Philippines, and back here. We need your prayers. Yes. The coming of the Lord is very near. Yes. We don't have much time before us. We don't know whether it's a ongoing or the rapture. Mm -hmm. Which one is early, we don't know. The one thing is for sure that we have to leave. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Right. This world is not our home. Amen. Amen. We want God to bless us. We want God to heal us. Amen. We have pain in our body. And we just pray. It's our sincere desire, Lord. Heal me. Heal me. But I just want you to, the other day I was talking with our brothers and sisters at Camp Valley. When you have pain in your body, what does that mean? It's time to pack up. <laughs> we don't like to heal things like that. No. You want God to heal. Yeah, He heals. Yes, he, does. he heals. But that doesn't mean that you will not die. Amen. Amen. You have to go. Amen. You have to leave your loved ones. And you have to go. Yeah. Why? Many times we just want, Lord, don't trouble me. Yeah. Keep me comfortable. I'll be a good Christian. I'll say my prayers. I'll read my Bible. I'll come to church. And I'll do anything you want me to do. Just one request. Keep me comfortable. But, but, but that's what he's not going to do. He's going to shake your nest. He changes our circumstances. Why? Because He created us with a great purpose. When He designed man, it was with a great purpose. He could have created us just like He created Lucifer. You know, when He designed Lucifer, He was perfect in wisdom. He was perfect in beauty. But that's not how God created man. He made him out of dust. But he made it in his own image and likeness. Yeah. Can you imagine creator taking dust and fashioning man in his own image and likeness? Why? Why are you creating this man? He desires that this creation, whom I am creating in my own image and likeness, should know me. You should know my character. If you look at the book of Genesis, before going to that, I just want to take the text, Ephesians chapter 1, and I have been reading that text everywhere I go. Ephesians 1, chapter, 15, uh, chapter 1, verse 15 to 18. Ephesians 1, 15 to 18. Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, the love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that He may know what is the hope of His calling, and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. Verse 18 once again. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that he may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Here the servant of God, Paul, he has a sincere prayer concerning the believers. Yes. He thanks God for their faith. But then he prays that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened we know a whole lot of things. 
But can we thank God for the precious word that He has given? 66 books. Amen. But you know, many of us, we don't like all the 66. We have our favorite books. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we just keep on reading that favorite book. If you need to know Him, if you have to know Him, you should know the 66 books. Every word, yes. every full stop. Amen. Mercy Amen. goodness. Oh, yeah. If you miss out one book, you're missing out on something very important concerning the character of God. Yes. Amen. Many times we are worried, we are concerned because we have not understood Him. We, do, we have not understood the principles on which He works. We are serving a God who is a God of principles. Yes, amen. And He is not going to sway the way you tell Him to do. No, 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 no. no way. No. If He starts doing things the way we tell Him, this world is going to be something else. All right. Not good. Thank God He doesn't do what we tell Him to do. Amen. It's hard. Hallelujah. The other day I was saying, can, can we thank God for not answering all our prayers? Yeah. It's easy saying Amen. But we go through a roller coaster. Yes, Amen. We get, go through all emotional stress. We are stressed out. Yeah. To tell you the truth, we are stressed out following God. We just come to the church so that we can get a little happy, yeah. a little comfortable. Christian life is not inside the church, it's outside the church. Yeah. Outside the church. Yeah. That's it. It's not inside the church. God didn't create us to sit inside the church and sing some songs. Amen. Yeah. He needs us to walk. Amen. And He wants us to walk the way He walks. Amen. That's what He desires. The whole creation is groaning. Can you imagine? While we are sitting here and singing songs and pray, asking God to bless us, what is this creation groaning? It's groaning for the revealing of the sons of God. And who are the sons of God? The ones who have, who know Him. Yeah. And once you know Him, you begin to walk the way He wants you to walk. Yeah. The whole eternity is waiting for the revealing of the sons of God, not for some worshippers. Yes, we sing songs. It's good. But God didn't just create us to sing songs. We have a song book, we sing. But I just want you to understand one simple thing. That's not your song. You're singing someone else's song. What's your song? It's easy singing someone else's song. God is interested in, what's my song? How am I walking? Have I understood Him? When you look at the Word of God, this, this is, this is 6,000 years plus. And why has He given this book in our hands so that we know who He is? If you look at the people in the Old Testament, age of conscience, the age of law, how they walked, and how hard God was with them. Is it true? True. Yeah. 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 Will you allow, will you and I allow God to do the same thing He did with them? How many of you will say amen for that? Amen. You want God to talk? Yes or no? Yes. But you know what he told Abraham? Leave everything and go to the land that I will show. Did he give him any promises when he told him to leave Ur? Any promises? Yes. Did God promise Abraham anything when he told him to leave his native place? Yes or no? Yes. Turn with me to Acts chapter 7. 
Can you see God talking to a man in the age of conscience? Acts chapter 7, verse 2 and 3. And he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, who come the God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Haran. And said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and come into the land which I will show thee. Yes, amen. Any promise? Yes, amen. No promise. When he is asking him to leave his native place, who? God is not telling him, I'll bless you. He didn't say that I'm going to give you a son. Nothing. I want you to walk. I want you to leave everything and go to the land that I will show you. That's the first time Abraham is hearing the voice of God. The second time when God said, that's when God gave him the promise, that's Genesis chapter 12. That's the second time when God talks to him when he is in Haran. But here, can you look at one man, the way God is dealing? We are serving that same God, and I want you to understand that. He cannot be partial with anyone. No. He is the same. He is an impartial God. This man Abraham, in the age of conscience, doesn't have a Bible. Yeah. No pastors. And God is not promising him anything. And look at us. We have 66 books. Yeah. And still we grumble. <laughs> still we tell everyone to pray for us. Who was there praying for Abraham? Anyone? Any promise? He didn't give him any promise. But how did Abraham walk? Can you just imagine? I just want to draw your attention, attention to this man Abraham. He just has a conscience inside. Nothing else. <laughs> While comparing him with us, what all we have, was Abraham delivered from sin? There was sin inside him. Eh? Ruling him. And does he have the fallen nature? He has. But look at us. We are on standing on this side of the cross. Delivered from sin. Glory, glory, glory. Abraham was a man on the other side of the cross. And sin was reigning in him. There's a difference between sin and sins. In the Garden of Eden, when man, using his free will, <coughs> chose to do his own, you know what happened? Who entered man? Sin, capital S, yeah. sin, entered man. The moment capital S sin entered man, man became the slave of sin. Yeah. And once sin overtook him, overpowered him, can you look at this man who was walking with God, becomes the enemy of God. He turns mad at God. It's not God turning mad at man. It was man turning mad at God and pointing finger at God. Not accepting his mistake. He's not sorry. Hiding behind the bush. Can you look at this man? How mean he is. How ungrateful he is. Pointing his finger at God and saying, The woman you gave. Do you understand the language that man talked? when sin entered him. Till yesterday he was walking with God. But now he points his finger at God. Can you thank God? He has been gracious from day one. He is not gracious in the New Testament. He has been gracious from day one. He could have wiped out man. 
created a new man. Blaming me? You chose. I gave you a big responsibility. The tree was there. Who put the tree there? God. Did God know? Man believed? Yeah. Did he know that? Yeah. Then why are you putting the tree there? When you know this man is going to eat, why are you putting the tree? Is it playing games with man? Then you have this word, you know. Many are interested in the book of Revelation. They are interested in what will happen once the church goes. But if we have to understand book of Revelation, you need to understand 65 other books. This is not a story book. This is revealing God's character. Amen. We need to know who he is. What are his standards? And once you know his standards, it's easy to walk. Christian life is not complicated. Amen. It's we who complicate it. That's right. With many do's and don'ts. That's it. It's a relationship when you walk with the creator of the universe. Amen. Amen. He is there with us. Sure he is. But the problem is, my natures and his don't match. Uh. That's the reason, though he is with me, I don't sense him. I'm lost. Though he is with me. It's just like the husband and wife, they stay together in the same house, but their son lives somewhere else. But the husband is calling his son and saying, can you tell your mom to give me coffee? <laughs> That's how many Christians are today. The creator of the universe is there inside you and you are telling me to pray for you? What's that? Can't you talk to him? What's hindering you from talking to the one who is there beside you? Yes. Oh, yes. Amen. The only reason is I have not understood him. And he is a God of standards. You don't want to know me. That's it. You depend on others' prayers. Oh, dear Lord. Today, a whole lot of people are banking on the prayers of others. Uh -huh. While we are supposed to walk. Yes, we need the prayers of others. Yeah. But that's a life support. It's just like in the intensive care unit. You know that? You have the oxygen and everything. That's all what the other's prayers can do. If you and I are not serious concerning our relationship with God, what good is other's prayer for me? Right. Uh, right. 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 Because God is not going to do anything in your life as long as you are not interested in that walk. Right. Right. Amen. That's it. But we tell others, can you pray? Man, our prayers are of no use. He respects your free will. Are you interested to walk? Yes. Wow. Amen. Look at what happened in the Garden of Eden. Sin came in. Yes. And this man becomes the enemy of God. And can you thank God? He's driving man out. A whole lot of things to meditate upon. If you take the word, it speaks. Amen. Yes, it does. Every time you read this book, it's as though we have never read it before. That's right. But if, if God has to open it up to us, That's right. Amen. He's watching my desires. You want to know me? You want to know who I am? Or are you satisfied with what you know? No. Today, many people are just satisfied with that. Yeah. No, not... And they miss out on a whole lot of things. Yes. Look at how these Old Testament people walked. I was talking about Abraham. Sin is there. It's the same sin that made man question God. It was the same sin that made Cain kill his own younger brother. The same sin made man erect that tower after the flood. 
you know, during the flood, all sinners were wiped out. One Noah, who was just, he is left. So can you look at what, how dangerous sin is? One Noah and his three sons, and their generation erect the, old, the, the tower. Sinners have been wiped out. But can you understand how dangerous sin is? Today we tell people, don't drink. We tell people a whole lot of things. But as long as they are not delivered from sin, it's of no use. And you need to understand one simple thing. God cannot forgive sin. He cannot tolerate sin. He is holy. He cannot. That's the reason he is driving man out. Till yesterday you were there with me. We both were talking. But now, mm -hmm. I cannot tolerate that. He is driven out. And then you see the yearning of God. He has not forsaken man. If you go into the dead, can you see Abraham? God calls Abraham. Why? No promise, nothing. Because of one that plays. To make us sit here. You know the groundwork that God did? To bring us into his presence? We did nothing. It's He who did everything for us Amen. to bring us into His presence this evening. Amen. Many times people, they say, it was a good sermon, it was a good message. I said, can you just stop saying that? Can we stop thanking the vessel? Amen. Come on. Can we thank the one who uses the vessel? Yeah. It's He who is worthy of all glory. Man has no place in his presence. Now when Moses erected the tabernacle, <coughs> even Moses could not find a place inside. He was out. That's who God is. And I need to know his character. And for that, the word is there. And I need to spend time in His presence to know Him. Amen. And can you see how He is revealing His nature? Calls Abraham, brings him to Canaan, and then delivers uh, and takes Abraham's generations to Egypt. And then these people, they don't want to come out. He brings them out, murmuring, grumbling, mad at God. They want to go back, oh but still, he is bringing them. We are the same like that. We didn't want to come and sit here, right? We tried our level best to avoid this place. But it is he who caught us. Yes. We ran away from God. We chased him around the countryside. <laughs> right? We chased him everywhere. But finally our creator caught up with us. Amen. Oh yes. And he brought us here. Amen. Oh, right. Why? What does he desire? He wants you and me to grow up. That's it. Amen. Amen. Yes, he, does. Yes. he wants us to be like him. Amen. Yes. Can we thank God for the high calling we have? That's what yes. Paul says. I just want your understanding to open the hope of our calling. The privilege we have. The angels don't have this privilege. The great privilege that he has given me. Look at one man Abraham. He's a blessing for so many. Just imagine if you and I are dead today. Will our kids remember us? Brother Bill. We have been working hard for them. How long do you think? Your wife is going to remember you? How long? Let's face the facts. You think she'll sit there the whole year and cry? How long? 
That's it. We are dying for them. But if I know him, amen. generations will remember me. Yes, amen. Do you understand oh, that? Yes, amen. If I walk with him, generations will remember me. Look at one Abraham. We remember him. Amen. How did he walk? How did Moses walk? Amen. And we have everything and we are dead and within one week our family forgets us. Simple reason, we don't give God the first place. That's it. Amen. That's the reason everything is a mess. Can we tonight give Him the first place? The only yearning that He wants in us is do you want to know me? Come on. Amen. We, we, what happens is, when God does some things in our life, we are so grateful. We thank God. Yes, we need to be grateful. But you need to understand one simple thing. He is not doing those things for you to be grateful. He is doing those things so that you can grow up. Amen. 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 Come on. You know what we do? We don't grow up. We are just grateful. That's the mistake. Even if you don't thank God, will He take care of you? Amen. Yes, yes or no? Yes. yes. He is not banking on our gratefulness. Amen. He is our Creator. Amen. He is our Father. Even if you don't believe in Him, right. He is our Creator. Yes, yes we are grateful. But what I'm supposed to do is grow up. Amen. Amen. Change the way I think. That's the reason the Holy Spirit is inside us. What's the Holy Spirit doing inside us? Amen. He came down as man and you know, when sin entered man, see, God cannot forgive sin. He himself came down. Did we ask him to come? Can you imagine the Creator inside Mary's womb? Creator of the universe. Solomon, you remember Solomon's prayer. He says, Heaven is your throne and earth is your footstool. My small temple. The same one who dwelt inside Solomon's temple with little glory. Can you imagine? He is there inside you. And me. Is it true? Amen. Is he the same one? Amen. Then why am I worried then? <laughs> why am I worried? Simple reason is I have not understood him. And it's been a long time. He has been there with me. But I'm not interested in talking to him. It's just like I am Brother Jesse, I, I am there with Brother Jesse. I've been there for one year with him. But he has never bothered to talk to me, but he has been always on the phone talking to others. <laughs> I'm just telling you an example. He talks to everyone. <clears throat> Calls up and he says, Is there anyone who can help me? There's so many things to do. And all the while I'm there. I am there, but I respect your freedom. Yes. Amen. Without your asking me, I won't interfere in your life. Because I created man, but I want hairs. Hairs of God. Amen. Can you read that verse? Romans 8, 17. What's our call? Romans 8, 17. <laughs> And if children, then hairs, hairs of God and joint hairs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. What's our call? God wants us to be what? Hmm? Hairs. What do you mean by hairs? Hairs means all that He has 
is ours. That's right. Everything. But there is a part. Yes. You need to be mature. Right. It's not for kids. Yeah, right. It's for grown-ups. Amen. But how do we grow up? That's the problem. How do we grow up? Just by going to church? No. The only way to grow up is to feed on God's word. Amen. Amen. Allow this word to go in. Accept the word as it is. Amen. Just a simple example. We, we, do we believe Jesus heals? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Are you sure? I'm sure. 100%. Then why are we popping in medicines? Uh -oh. <laughs> why? Huh? Is there power in the name of Jesus in 2014? Yes, there is. Hallelujah. Then what's the what are the pills doing in your mouth? <laughs> what's that? Today we see people praying while taking pills. What's that? <laughs> And when our near and dear ones die, we are heartbroken. Why? Didn't they go home? Yes. And why are you worried then? They finished the race. Even though we are sick, if our near dear one is sick, can't even walk, there is a lot of pain, will you pray, Lord, call him home? Yes or no? What will be your prayer? Let, let's face the facts. We'll be praying, Lord, heal. We claim healing. We don't want anyone to go. We don't want. Though he can't walk, Lord, keep him here a few more days. And then when he becomes a headache for us, a nuisance for us, then we pray, wish he goes. <laughs> Let's face the facts. Why are we not growing up? I am not ready to accept the word as it is deep within. I know a whole lot of things. But I am not ready to accept it as it is. There is power in the name of Jesus still today. How can I pray for others if I am eating medicines? Is it true? That's true. That's true. Am I not a hypocrite? Telling others Jesus will heal when I am taking medicines. It pains, it hurts. But do I trust the Lord? If he can deliver me from sin, can he deliver me from cancer? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Amen. Amen. He can. But can I completely surrender myself into his hands? When we accepted Jesus into our lives, what did we mean? Did we ask him to sit by us and be our navigator or did we give him the keys of our life? What did we do? Do you remember your first prayer? What was it? I accept you as the Savior and Lord. Two things, not one. He forgave your sins just because you accepted Him as your Savior, not only Savior, but you gave Him the keys of your life. And you said, you are the Lord of my life. Yes. You know what you did? You told him to sit in the driver's seat. Yeah. That's right. And when you accept him as the Lord, then what are you supposed to do? Where are you supposed to sit? Here? That's the hard part. Yeah. We are just supposed to sit in the back. Yeah. But we don't like his driving. <laughs> Can you see the contradictions deep within us? Yes. I love you. But I don't want you to drive. 
I will do the driving. You just help me out when I am at a crossroad. That's the reason I don't grow up. I am a contradiction. I am confused. Christian life is so simple. Amen. He desires. He clearly said in his word, the just shall live by faith. What do you mean by faith? Trust. Trust Waiting. means? What do you mean by trust? Waiting. You know who he is. The morning I was sharing with the brothers in Pipe Creek. You know, Jesus is there in a boat. The storm comes. What did the disciples do? What are they doing? Trying to wake him up. Why? I have faith. I know what he can do. He can still the storm. I can't do it. He can do it. And what did Jesus do when he got up? Thank you for waking me up. I'm really grateful. I was really tired. He said, O ye of And what would be the reaction of Peter? You telling us of little faith? We woke you up because we have faith. <laughs> Is it true? Yes. It's true. Amen. We try to wake up a sleeping Jesus. We think he's sleeping. <laughs> he's tired. Yeah. We have to tell him, God bless my kids. Because poor God, he doesn't know how many I have. We try to be his counselors. It's high time we shut up. Amen. It's high time we shut up. Don't try to counsel the omniscient. He knows. Before we pray, he knows what we are going to pray. What we are supposed to pray is, Lord, give me the wisdom. Amen. Give me the understanding yes. Yes. to know your ways. Yes. Oh, yes. I am dust. Oh. I have no one to tell you. Oh, grant it, Lord. Amen. And these fishermen, they try to wake him up and he says, Oh, you have little faith. Then what is faith? What does he expect us to do when the storm comes? You tell me. Trust. If he is sleeping, can you sleep? Yes. In the middle of the storm. <laughs> That's when the true nature comes out. Amen. I say I trust you. And there he shows us. He doesn't have to know anything. He knows everything inside us. He allows all these tests to show us how good we are. It's not a test for him. It's a test for us because we think <clears throat> that I have faith. I think I am good. But when he creates that circumstance, that's when we know who we are. Amen. That's the reason. Can you believe that, according to the scriptures, Amen. God uses Satan to yes. train us up. Yes, he does. You know, turn with me to Luke chapter 22. Look at what it tells Peter. Verse 31 and 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. For when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. What does that mean? Has permission been granted? Satan came with a request. And what's the request? Sift him as wheat. Has the permission been granted? You look at that verse and tell me. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had decided to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Is the permission granted? Yes or no? Yes or no? 
Look at the verse in Delhi. Yes. Yes or no? No. No? No. Or yes? No. It clearly says, Simon, permission has been granted and I know you will pay. That's the reason he says, But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, I know you will fail, but this thing is going to do some good to you. You will strengthen others. Satan is not asking permission to destroy Peter. He is asking permission to sift him as wheat. <coughs> Satan cannot do anything on his own. Not anything. Not anything. He needs divine sanction. Amen. That's right. Because this creation is God's. Yes, it is. God won't allow the devil to play games with his creation. No. It's he who draws the lines. But he allows him to sift us as we. Why? So that we can become strong. Because he is preparing us to sit on the Throne. That's what he wants us. Right. That's the reason he paid that price on the cross. Can you understand the yearning inside him? That we may know him. As man he came down. Inside the womb of Mary. And then he goes to the temple. When he is 40 days old. The other day I was sharing. Can you imagine? 40 days. In the hands of Mary. In the temple. Mary has come for a cleansing. And he has to give half a shekel. Can you imagine? Who is in the hands of Mary? Can you just imagine? It's the Spirit of God that has to open it up for you. In the hands of Mary, the one who is there, he is the one whose temple this is. When he descended with his glory, Moses ran out. This is the same person. Not number two or number three. It's the same number one. Number one. Amen. Who is there in the hands of Mary. What are you doing here? And then at the age of 12, he comes, sitting before the rabbis, answering the questions. And then he too has some questions. Yes, he does. Why is he asking questions? And for how many days? Three days? His parents are busy searching for him. And then when they come and they... You just turn with me to Luke chapter 2, verse 46. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of teachers, both hearing and them and asking them questions. Can you imagine a 12-year-old boy has some questions from the Pharisees, from the leaders? 12 years old. And for how many days? Three. Can you just imagine? The meeting is going on for three days. He is answering their questions. And he too has questions. What does that mean? Does he know the law? He's answering the questions. They are asking questions from the law. Does he know the law? Yeah. How does he know the law? Does anyone have to teach him? No. no. He is the one who gave the law. 631 laws. And you look at that. If you go inside the most holy place, open the Ark of Covenant, take out those two tables of stone, the handwriting on the stone and his handwriting is the same. Amen. Come on. Amen. It's the same. It's not someone else. He has the answers. You ask him any questions, he has the answers. But then, he has some questions. And man doesn't have the answers. Yeah. And three days. Why these questions? Man, 
in the Garden of Eden. You ate that fruit, right? Why? Did I not tell you not eat it? Why did I plant that tree? See, there was nothing in the tree. Why did God plant that tree? It was a warning for man. I have created you to be responsible. The tree is just like you have seen outside big electrical poles. There is a skull with those bones. What does that mean? Danger. That's what this tree was telling man. Danger. What's the danger? You have been given all responsibility. You are ruling over the fish in the sea, birds in the air and over the land. This responsibility is very dangerous. Be careful. The man fell. And then you see on Mount Sinai, God is giving the law to man. Why is the law being given? So that man can understand the character of God. How tough he is. Amen. And how serious sin is. And you know the children of Israel, when the law was given, what did they say? You just tell us anything to do. We will do. In the Garden of Eden, he was pointing fingers at God. And now on Mount Sinai, he says, you tell us anything. We will do it. God gives them the law. What did we do? Standing before John, when Jesus is there in the river Jordan, what is John doing? I need to be baptized. Why are the children of Israel getting baptized? Before Jesus came, you know, God sent John the Baptist. And what are these people doing? Getting baptized. What does that mean? On Mount Sinai, you fellows said that we will do anything you tell us. <laughs> now why are you getting baptized? What is man saying? I am a sinner. I can't do anything. Do you accept it? Did you understand who am I? He comes down as man. He has some questions. What are the questions? You have been doing so many observing the law. But still why do you have all these rituals? You every year on the day of atonement you send a lamb out. But why can't you stop doing it now? You have sent so many lambs out, goats outside. But what are the Pharisees and the Sadducees, what are they to say? We just don't understand. We keep on doing it. If we don't do it, we are done. Can you thank God for the words on the cross? Amen. He shouted, It is finished. Amen. His part. Amen. Amen. What is finished? His part. The price. <coughs> the demand of the law. Wages of sin is death. Amen. The price has been paid. Amen. Now man, you don't have to be the slave of sin. If you want, you can walk. And when I accepted Jesus as my Savior, He has come in. Amen. Why? Not to sing songs, but to walk. Why is it so hard for me to walk? Simple reason. Am I ready to accept the word as it is? He is there to help us walk. But if I have the desire, He'll give me the strength. Amen. We don't know how to pray also. That's the reason He has given us the unknown tongues. But how many of us worship the Lord in tongues? Yes. Singing songs is easy. But why is it hard for me to talk to him in tongues? Is it not a language that he has given us? Amen. Here it is. But I speak to him in English. He wants me to speak in tongues. Yeah, he does. Yes, he does. Why? 
Because I don't know who he is. The spirit inside me knows. Yes, that's it. And the spirit talks in a language that only he knows. Yes. Come on. But since I don't allow myself, I'm not giving the Holy Spirit the access in my life. My growth is stunted. You know how much we miss out when we are not worshipping the Lord in the Spirit. God is Spirit and He wants each one of us to worship Him not in English, but in the Spirit. Yes. Yes. But that is only possible if I am coming before Him with a sincere heart. And the Spirit is there. To talk to him in unutterable groanings. And he prays according to God's will. <laughs> this evening will I allow myself to be used by the Spirit? Amen. Can we open our mouth and talk to him in a known tongues? What's the problem in that? Many times, have you seen people sleeping with the Bible open? Have you seen? It's so easy to fall asleep with the Bible open. You know why? God won't allow you to read the Bible. It's not the devil. It's God. You know why? Deep down within I am not sincere. If I am not sincere deep within, God will shut this book for me. You are not fit to read my word. You are not sincere deep inside. If I am sincere, the one who wrote it is inside me. Oh, yeah, yeah. He will open it up for me. Yes, he will. And when he opens up the word, even if my purse is empty, there is nothing on the table that's not an issue. Amen. This word gives the strength. It's my father talking. Amen. And all that he desires is, can I be sincere? Deep within. And allow God the access to do anything he wants with my life. He'll mold me. But he wants my permission. Yes. He's not going to force. That's right. But this evening can we say, Here am I, Lord. Mm -hmm. I want to know you. Mm -hmm. And I want you to mold me. Mm -hmm. Why he allows that pain and problems in our life? Mm -hmm. So that I can know him more closely. Amen. Amen. There are gifts of spirit, is it true? Yes. For whom? But do I have a yearning for that? Amen. All that I am concerned is, Lord, bless me. Bless my children. Bless my job. That's all that I am concerned. But his concern is, you want me? You want my blessings. There are a lot of blessings in store for us. Amen. But he wants me to grow up. Amen. That is a simple question. A simple thing. I'll close now. You know, Eliezer is sitting. The servant of Abraham is sitting near the well. And he has a question. He has put a condition. I'll tell the girl to give me water. And the girl on her own should say, I'll give water to the camels. Camels. Why? I'm just about to close. Just a simple question. Why is the servant sitting there with this question? This condition? I will ask this girl to give me water. And she on her own should say, I'll give water to all the camels. How many camels? It's around 10 camels. One camel drinks around 15 gallons. Wow. And in those days, you don't have the submersible pump. <laughs> you have to go down the stairs. And if I am there, I would have told the servant, man, you just waste your time sitting here. <laughs> Why has Elias put that condition? The servant stands is a shadow for the Holy Spirit. But same Holy Spirit is there inside us watching us. The Holy Spirit is there to help us. He is the comforter. Yes, He is. Amen. But before that, 
He is watching who you are. Outside, I am a good believer. Excellent person. Deep within, who am I? That's what the Spirit of God is watching. Can I be sincere there? Mm -hmm. Look at this servant. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to help her. The camel is there with all the gifts for this girl. Yes, all hers. The ring is also there. But the servant is not going to show any of that now. No bribing. I'll be observing what you do. You know why? I, though I am a servant, I have not come here for a servant for Abraham's house. I have come for someone who is going to take the place of Sarah. Mm. I have come in search for an owner. Same way the Holy Spirit is here in search of some hairs. He is observing us. You know what the girl does? Why is saying she should say give the water to the camels? She should do things without being told to do. You understand that? Yeah. She should do things without being told. Right. A servant is someone who has to be told to do something. But if you are the owner. No one will tell you what you are supposed to do. You have to do it on your own. Same way the Holy Spirit is watching us. If God doesn't tell me anything, what's my desire inside? What's my sincere desire? Do I really love the Lord? Have I understood the depth of God's love? Once you understand the depth of His love, then everything else Amen. is in the shadow. Then the husband, wife and kids, they are all in the shadow. It's He and only, only He who takes the primary place. But do I love Him completely tonight? The Holy Spirit is there within us to transform us, to change us. We are running out of time. The coming of the Lord is so near. Amen. Will I allow the Holy Spirit to mold me? Amen. Can we close our eyes, go ahead, and ask the Lord to transform us? He wants us to be like Him. Can we open our mouth and instead of talking in English, can we speak to him in our own tongues? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you imagine the joy we have when we speak in tongues? You start sensing the presence of the Lord. Speaking in English is something else. Speaking in unknown tongues is something else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's feel free in the presence of the Lord. Open our mouth and worship Him in the Spirit. Till now we have been singing in English. It's good. Hallelujah. 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 If I am not able to worship, there might be something in my life. Ask the Lord to show it to you. Confess your mistakes tonight and you will start swimming in the river of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let, let, after that, let any problem come. Let cancer come. Let death come. You will start swimming in the river of God. Hallelujah. The same river is here tonight in our midst. Hallelujah. Let's just throw away all our worries, all our doubts. He loves us. He loves us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The hope of our calling. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who is there inside us to transform us. Hallelujah. To make us like Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, the Divi Laba 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 Shab, the Divi Kara Baba 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 Laba, the Divi Kabba Laba Laba Laba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Let us not play games with God. Let's be sincere deep within. Hallelujah. Let's not hide anything from Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If any one of us doesn't have that experience, the scripture says, Ask and it shall be given unto you. Hallelujah. It's the promise of our Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When I'm speaking in tongues, I'm not speaking to men, but I'm speaking to my master who loves me so much. Hallelujah. Though I'm not able to understand, the spirit is interceding for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He designed us. He delivered us from sin. He came down as man to deliver us from sin. Hallelujah. So that we can be like him. Hallelujah. We can be his heirs. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When I speak in English, I have to be careful about the grammar. I have to be careful careful about the tense, but when I speak in unknown tongues, I don't have to worry about anything. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Once you start worshipping in the spirit, let it be diabetes, let it be anything. Hallelujah. Our inner person becomes strong and let any problems come. You'll be able to face it. You'll be able to overcome it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Just, just, I just want you to look here. The one who is inside us. You know, you have heard of Samson? Amen. He was a man like us. Amen. You know what he did? It was the same Holy Spirit. People tried to block him by locking the gates of heaven. And the man who had the keys, he said, Samson, you are staying inside. You are not coming out. I have the keys. What did Samson do? What did he do? He just walked off with the gates along with the pillars. He tied up 300 wolves. Is it true? Yes. If I and Brother Bill and two or three of us try to catch a dog, will it be possible? How did one man like us? He rounded off 300 of them Tied their tail, put their torch. Can you imagine the Holy Spirit who is inside you? Let it be cancer, let it be diabetics, let it be any issue. The small David, the lion took away his lamb. What did this David do? He didn't climb up a tree. He ran after the lion, tore him up. Same Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Not someone else. Amen. Not someone else. He is there inside you. Amen. He's the same powerful one. Amen. Will you allow him Amen. take charge of me? Before we go home tonight, we need to be refreshed. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we commit ourselves? Amen. I'm just stopping here. I want the Holy Spirit to take charge. He is here. Let's allow ourselves complete freedom. Lord, take me. Hold me. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Let's open our mouth and let's start talking to Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are many things in our life that need to be changed. The Holy Spirit knows He will transform. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. When you receive power from on high, hallelujah, that's what Jesus said, hallelujah. And can you see what the disciples did? They shook Jerusalem from the foundations, hallelujah. They were normal fishermen like us, but they stood up. Hallelujah. It's the Holy Spirit who did everything. Hallelujah. If the Holy Spirit can take those fishermen in his hands, he's ready to take you in his hands. Hallelujah. 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 Allow the Holy Spirit to take complete charge of our life. Hallelujah. Jeremiah, take me. Mold me. Hallelujah. Cleanse me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. 